I'm Jamie Hansen. I am the cataloger for the Special Collections Department. And I'm going to talk a little bit about a very interesting item that we have, very scarce and very interesting, uh, called a dissected map. Now, at first glance, you might think that that has something to do with biology, but actually it's completely uh, associated with geography. In the 19th century, there was a feeling, as there is today, that toys and games should be educational. And so-called dissected maps, which are simply jigsaw puzzles, were extremely popular with um, certainly parents, because there were so many of them produced, how popular they were with children, I don't suppose we'll ever actually know. But I'm sure that the kids enjoyed putting together the jigsaw puzzles. And of course, you can still buy jigsaw puzzles of the United States and maps of the world uh, from very small to floor sized. This particular one is particularly nice because it's in its original box. It is actually a map of the United States printed in 1887 by McLaughlin Brothers. McLaughlin Brothers was a, an extremely well-known firm of uh, publishers who produced thousands of children's books, uh, so-called toy books, entertaining books, books for fun, educational materials, games, and puzzles from about 1829 to well into the 20th century. The firm was bought out eventually by Milton Bradley Company, and while Milton Bradley retained the McLaughlin Brothers name for a few years, eventually they abandoned it, and McLaughlin Brothers became yet another one of the 19th century American firms that has sunk into obscurity. But while they were in their heyday, they were known for the quality of their particularly color printing or chromolithography. Of course, the map itself is a chromolithograph. It is mounted on cardboard. Sometimes these were actually mounted on wood, but this particular one is cardboard. It's um, a map of the United States as it appeared in 1887. Most of the states look much as they do now, except Dakota, which was one state, not two. It was the Dakotas. And it's um, an interesting curiosity. The real object of interest for this particular dissected map is the box. It still has its original box as it was purchased by someone, perhaps by a parent for a lucky child, maybe for Christmas. And the box is particularly interesting. It is actually made out of wood and cardboard. The cardboard top and bottom are glued to wood edges and the wood's been covered with paper. The fascinating thing about the cover is the depth and detail of the illustration and the symbolism of it is fascinating. It's typical of the almost jingoistic attitude of the United States in 1887. The fact that it also depicts a Native American has certainly an interest for us today, but the feeling then was not um, particularly to inspire a sense of the appreciation of the diversity of the human race or even the diversity of people who lived in the United States. Um, the illustration, and it is a high quality chromolithograph, depicts a massive female figure seated on a rock underneath a fir tree, right on the edge of a cliff, perilously near the edge of a cliff, I should say. The female figure is wearing the Phrygian cap or liberty cap, uh, which dates actually from the time of the Romans. Roman uh, or slaves in the Roman Empire were 
given these caps to indicate that they had won their freedom or been given their freedom. Uh, they were traditionally red, what we might call a stocking cap, but the top of them flops over and should always face forward. They were worn by uh, the sans culottes, the uh, revolutionaries during the French Revolution, and America adopted many of the symbols of the French Revolution. The figure may be Columbia, the symbol of the United States, may be Minerva. Minerva was um, the same goddess, the Roman goddess, uh, the uh, Roman version of the Greek goddess Athena, and is the goddess of wisdom and of civil liberty. But we can assume it's, it's certainly standing for Columbia as the symbol of freedom. Columbia sits under the tree pointing to a map of the United States. She holds a very large atlas on her lap. Interestingly enough, standing next to her is a much smaller, and we would say in a rather subservient position, a figure of a Native American. Possibly female, although um, certainly a young female, possibly a male figure. It's, it's very androgynous. Um, the figure is in a, we might call it dress of a Plains Indian. I'm not so sure that that's really what Plains Indians wore. The figure is wearing a um, loincloth or a wrap around its waist, has a necklace of perhaps bear claws or some teeth of some large animal, and wears a little headdress of feathers, and is holding a bow, a quiver with arrows lies on the ground behind the figure. The figure is, as I say, much smaller than the massive figure of Minerva or Columbia, leans over and looks with apparently wide-eyed interest at whatever Columbia or Minerva is instructing. The background shows, I assume, a sunset. In 1887, there was still the feeling that the West, there was something mystical about the West. There was something very mystical about the Western United States. And there was still the feeling that to go West, young man, or maybe young woman, was to ensure not only a sense of freedom, spaciousness, but of perhaps material success. And I believe that the scene beyond the cliff, beyond the figures, is the West. The uh, title is partly in gold, it's in elaborate script, and even includes the publisher. It's most unusual that the McLaughlin brothers actually printed the map, too. Very often these dissected maps were simply sheets taken from atlases done by other publishers. The maps were then pasted on wood backgrounds, cut out, and with amazing precision, put in a box and marketed by someone else entirely. It's a remarkable piece of Americana, remarkable in its symbolism, remarkable in its state of preservation, and a fine example of one of the many items we have relating to our 19th century collection of children's materials.